Welcome to another Headless Professor video. This one is on the test of proportions. We're going to use this as an inferential statistic. It helps to test a null hypothesis. We use it when we have a sample versus norms design and the variable is measured on a binary nominal scale such as male or female. Here's what you need to plug it into the formula. The sample size, n, the population proportion, and the sample proportion. What we mean by a proportion is the part of a group or a sample that has a particular characteristic divided by the whole, the n of that particular group or sample. If this formula sounds familiar, it is because it is similar to the percent formula of part divided by whole times a hundred. To move from a percent to a proportion, simply take the percent and divide by a hundred. That means that all of our proportions are going to be between 0 and 1. Let's take an example. Let's suppose that we take a sample of customers that we observe at Hancock's store. Hancock's store is very famous for its uh, fabrics and sewing supplies. We find that within that sample of 64 customers, there are 57 women and only 7 men. And this would lead us to the hypothesis that Hancock's disproportionately attracts women customers. So our n, our sample size, is 64. We had 57 women and only 7 men. This gives us a proportion of females in the sample of 57 divided by 64, or 0.89. Now in the population, where half are women, we have a proportion of 0.5 for females. Here is the formula for the test of proportions z-score. We take the proportion in the sample and subtract the portion in the population. That's our simple numerator. And by the way, we can reverse these two and take the uh, proportion of the population minus the proportion of the sample, and that will simply reverse the uh, negative or positive sign. We're using a two-tailed test, so it really doesn't make any difference. The more difficult part of the equation is the denominator. My suggestion is get the denominator first and then store it in your calculator memory. So let's use our example. We had a population proportion of 0.5. So we're going to start off going 1 minus that population proportion of 0.5 equals 0.5. And then we're going to multiply that times the population proportion of 0.5, and we're going to get a product of 0.25. We then take that product of 0.25, and we divide by our sample size of 64. This gives us 0 0.0039. We then square root that, and we get 0 0.0625. That is the denominator. Now we're going to save that in the memory. You don't have to round it, just save it in the memory. We then have to get the numerator. We take the sample proportion minus the population proportion. Here we take the 0.89 of our sample that were female and subtract the 
which was the proportion of females in the population. And we get 0.39. That is your numerator. It represents the difference between the sample proportion and the population proportion. We then hit our divide key, then our memory recall key, and then equal. That is our z-score, 6.24. Now we go to a t-table, and we look at the very last row of the t-table. That's usually going to have an infinity sign by it. That's actually a table for converting z-scores. In order to be significant at those particular levels, we must have z-scores greater than the critical values seen here. Since our z-score is much larger than what's given in the table, we are significant at an excellent level. P is less than 0 0.001. Here's what this means. There is less than one chance in a thousand that such a sample of 89% female would be drawn randomly from a population of 50% female. Therefore, we should reject the null hypothesis and declare that this sample is predominantly female. There are some alternative tests that could be used instead of a test of proportions. For example, we could do a chi-square, where the observed numbers would represent what we observed in our sample, and the expected frequency would be generated from the population. We could also use a Kolmogorov-Smirnov test. This will tend to be much more robust and cautious than a test of proportions. For small sample sizes, we could just use the binomial distribution itself. Interestingly enough, in this particular case, all of these alternative tests agree with the test of proportions that we should reject the null hypothesis because P is less than 0.001. This has been another Headless Professor video. Create your very own video podcast from PowerPoint. Log on to authorstream.com. It's absolutely free.